Hi everyone, this is Greg, aka Grégoire from France, from Greg's Whiskey Guide. Um, I was uh, supposed, supposed by myself, to be doing an episode about uh, the whiskey of the year uh, by popular demand, uh, but for some reason, uh, curfew and lockdown and stuff are involved couldn't get the, some bottles I wanted to uh, use for this and take the time to try every sample or bottle that could fit in a kind of overview of my favorite whiskies of 2020 but it is coming soon so please be patient meanwhile I'm finishing if I may say because I have decided there will be a sequel to those face-to-face -face, uh, series uh, about blended whiskey um, and I can already tell you the sequel will be of the same brand as this one Johnny Walker uh, after I did a private uh, tasting face-to-face uh, -face of Blue Label uh, my bottle versus uh, new drum drinkers bottle uh, each one sent a sample and then we did a, a comparison which was very interesting um, but I thought uh, maybe uh, it would be worth sharing it with all of you guys because it's controversial uh, Johnny Walker Blue Label is apparently today controversial uh, especially on YouTube uh, sometimes also I see on on, uh, on some blogs um, but also another one that's controversial mind you is the red label um, especially to the new young generation not a uh, many uh, of the new young generation of, uh, of people are and I feel old now saying that sorry <laughs> aren't used to blended whiskies often they start the journey by single malts and when we're talking single malts we're talking 100 percent malted barley where once again here we have around only 25 percent of malted barley so the difference shows we're talking here about mass market because a johnny walker red is uh the best seller worldwide in terms of scotch whiskey um, if we exclude the indian market that's very specific because the first f the first uh, four uh, references let's say are only uh, indian uh, indian whiskey stand by indian whiskey standards uh, the best sales but they're not per se uh, whiskey uh, that respond to the uh, regulation of uh, the SWA in Scotland to start with. So if we if we put that aside, the McDowell and all these super famous brands in Asia, here, for instance, I'm in France, but also in Europe, we don't have nothing to do with these brands. They don't even come here. Sometimes they're sold by uh, in the UK, but some platforms, but we, we we don't get to to drink them to to even to see them on our shelf so uh, if we consider only the uh, worldwide production that can be called whiskey uh, like i said scotch regulation but a bit wider uh, the best seller is johnny walker uh, with uh, 80 18 uh, that four billions of nine liter cases of alcohol uh, just for 2019 it's the statistics I have uh, so kind of uh, a lot of bottles per second <laughs> so you cannot expect the same content in there than in a uh, high-end stuff and even the blue label mind you uh, that has some popularity in Asia and, and, and in the United States and elsewhere the f the first release is in 1992 of blue label is necessary absolutely not the same than nowadays standards have changed supply and demand 
question in in, in uh, ten years ago uh, and 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 since then cannot uh, you cannot compare uh, and, and we did a comparison already about with ten years of difference between my blue label bottle and and my friend's blue label bottle already 10 years makes a difference you can sense there's not the same content in terms of old stock of whiskies casks involved because there's a sh there's a shortage uh, of old cask and with the the increase of production of blue label uh, you cannot have the same uh, even the grain, I believe, you cannot have the same quality and the same depth with the old casks. With the Johnny Walker Red, it's another story. Uh, but we can see if we look at the so the company. If we look at the history of the company, I'm not going to be long on, on this because I did a I can say it, a huge topic on my website uh, in 2018 about the Johnny Walker company, uh, the, a brand who's uh, owned by Diageo, by the way. So huge, huge company. Um, and I attended a masterclass and, uh, I, uh, about uh, the blue label and different uh, expressions. And in this masterclass, I learned a lot of things. And also I uh, decided to gather all my notes about any uh, Johnny Walker expression I tried so far. So in 2018, uh, it was about 20 tasting notes, uh, including five different versions of the blue label, uh, probably the same or more uh, on the red label. Uh, so I've been trying red label for 20 years and it was, mind you, my first, probably my first uh, whiskey properly tasted. Um, and explained etc with a friend and that kind of started my journey truly and not mixed with coke and stuff uh, as i used to know and hate uh, in in uh, students parties and i didn't like it put me off whiskey for some years um, but the Johnny Walker Red uh, that you can find anywhere uh, in the world uh, is and also almost anywhere in bars and restaurants, right? So uh, it's often the first experience of people, uh, these or other uh, blended whiskey brands uh, from Scotland. So um, this, this specific uh, red label, not this bottle, you're gonna see an older one. So red label, uh, the Johnny Walker story starts in 2005, uh, sorry, with uh, the birth of John Walker, uh, the father of Alexander Walker, who will develop uh, the business uh, uh, in Kilmarnock in, in, uh, in Scotland and uh, First blending whiskey from the company is uh, in in eighty uh, fifty, um, but the first one that that succeeded that uh, that made the fame of the of the um, of the brand it seems to be in eighty sixty five only, and it was called at the time Old Highland whiskey. So uh, and then the square bottle, mind you, was uh, for uh, storage in ships. Uh, to be easier to uh, put with other ones and and block it uh, from uh, the, the 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 moves. Uh, the square bottle dates from 1920, uh, but a first red label version, which was called originally Special Old Highland Red Label, is from uh, 1906. Uh, this striding man you can see here dates from 1908 it's a designer who, who, who did it uh, you will find more details in my topic uh, i will put a link to this topic i was talking about uh, in the description so you will know a lot a lot of things i think not all but a lot of things about the brand um, and while preparing this topic i i finally <laughs> 
got the information I was searching for a long time. By chance, yes, it was one of the favorites of uh, Winston Churchill, and I didn't know it. I searched for a long time, and he used to uh, to drink it in uh, highballs of this time, so with uh, some water. Uh, so in 1909, the special old Highland red label becomes red label. Uh, what else to say of basic information? 35 whiskies enter in the com composition of this red label. 35 whiskies, including five single grains. Um, while the 40 whiskies for the black label, mind you. The age statement, the first versions of the uh, red label, before it was called red label, that special old Highland, were 10 years old. And then drop the age statement to start around five years old. Uh, and that made already a difference. Now the heart of red label is uh, a few uh, malt distilleries from Scotland. Starting by Speyside, Cardew, which is of course owned by the, the same owner, Diageo, but also Aberfeldy owned by a Bacardi company um, in the Highlands, so a bit under the Speyside area. But there are also some famous Highlander, and it shows Kleinish, of course, to start with. A lot of character giving it all the while the Abafeldi gives it this malty side, quite malty and caramelly. Of course, it comes also from the grain. Uh, Cardo gives it some sweetness, fruity, and a uh, nice oakiness. Um, I won't name you all the, all the single malts, it would be too long. The smoky side, because uh, Red Label is slightly smoky, but it's a very important component, comes partly from Kulila, uh, from Isla, so, and maybe from other Lagavulin, maybe and other singles, but also from Talisker. And this is very important, you will uh, understand later on why Talisker is very important in Johnny Walker history. So uh, what I'm going to do here, as always in this comparison series, and I hope this will not fall, <laughs> is compare a bottle from 2020. Okay, it's one liter, while well, the other is 70. Um, I'm trying to do things properly. Uh, sorry for the re uh, about the reflections. So what we can see here, uh, 34 degrees, yeah, uh, label uh, was decided in, in the uh, in 19th century as well uh, to distinguish it from the other brands. Um, so the degrees haven't changed, only the, the way the label is placed on the bottle. Um, the caps are almost the same. But what is very important, and uh, you might not see, let me find some paper. Yeah, you can see the striding man here on the uh, recent bottle. And this is an interesting way to date the bottles, uh, approximately at least. Uh, like last time for the famous grouse, where the, the grouse was in black and white, so that gave me an information when I search in my books and internet and uh, ask for that's why uh, how I knew it was older than this or that year this is almost the same except even in the master class they couldn't give us the, the uh, exact date of the change but we know uh, during I learned been, been during the master class that my old bottle I found by chance with a ridiculously low price. I should have bought several ones, but as you can see, the condition was the bottle was not super great. So I was expecting a lot of uh, OBE and maybe degradation. So I didn't bought several ones, and later on it was too late. But what you can see is the striding man here is 
looking uh, on the right well it's the opposite for you guys maybe but while there he's looking on the left so this one the older one he's looking behind uh, I mean backwards like while well, this one is going uh, on the other so, uh, side so it's going to the future so this change of, of uh, direction came uh, into uh, the beginning of the 1980s as I understand then I saw label change so I think this one uh, the older one is from around 90 95 maybe maximum um, this is not a French uh, by the way this is not a French like last time no ah this is okay okay um, uh, apologies so this is a French import but as there's not the letter D like I showed you last time uh, we can tell it's after a 1983 but as we saw the changing of a label it's before the 1990s so it's a, a 1980s let's say bottle well this one is 2020 uh, a few months ago okay so i'm going to show you the difference of color and then we're going to get into the tasting because as much as i hate it i never succeed to make it uh, short so already uh, so this one if I'm not mistaken is the older let me see yeah this one is the old there's a huge nosing difference yeah oh my god so this one is the older this one is the older this one is the most recent so doesn't super show on on the on the here okay so i get no mistake but on the glass i can tell you the the most recent one is um darker but you could be surprised by this uh well, let me put that away once again, it's a difficult installation, <laughs> but each time we're trying to make it uh, the most practical as possible. So what I'm going to do right now is the same like I do every time, is compare nosing, compare tasting, not really giving a mark because, like I said, sorry, it's delicate. It's delicate because of possibilities of degradation. Of the older one but it always makes us learn something on the worst batches there's a lot of batch variations in in blended whiskey despite the quality control despite what the brand said says uh, the master blender says etc I can tell you there are a lot of batch variations and uh, in my rates I can I can note sometimes 25 points of differences between the worst one and the best one. So best ever rating for red label and don't kill me was 90 out of 100, yes, for the best batches, while the worst were, were under 70, something like 70 out of 100. And my average rating is not 50, so uh, that means uh, 70, 71 is, a, is an okay, uh, but very average, uh, even less than average uh, rating. N nothing is really worth buying before, on, I mean, under 85, 86 uh, out of 100. Uh, then depends what you want, but uh, what you want to do. Um, if it's for education and you search for some profiles difficult profiles I can it's another story scoring um, so we're gonna try I'm gonna nose the older one first nose the new one and then taste them and then add some water I 
I have noted down the notes common to all the uh, the maximum of variety of notes that that are coming from the all the Johnny Walker Red I tried. So I'll tell you later on. So I can sense already a, a, a loss, a bit of a loss, which we call OB orbital effect. The ev evaporation. It's a screw pack cap, but even when it's sealed, uh, guys, whether it's screw cap or uh, cork, doesn't really matter if even when they're tight, they can be uh, some evaporation and degradation of the profile. It's unfortunately it happens. So this one has a bit of OBE, so uh, it, the OBE uh, is uh, doing some uh, extra blending smoothing if i may say operation there uh, but also it tend to uh, degrade into a more greener profile than probably it was so lots of green elements lots of uh, forest moss tea black tea it's a bit earthy, but it could come from the peat elements as well as uh, it was the, the peated whiskies in the 80s and 90s were harsher uh, than now, or more, let's say, more typically uh, earthy and uh, smoky, at least for some of the components. Yeah, there's something a bit waxy. almost soapy but here we still have some uh, malted barley some caramel some citrus fruit some uh, typical like I wrote here uh, dried fruit s slight touch of herbal elements sweet spices very complex very complex There's quite some depth here uh, that I don't really have in the younger one. Let's do the younger one now. Oof, what jumps already a lot is that that full caramel profile, uh, natural and unnatural. It's very loud. Um, there's some burnt wood. Malted barley, okay, a lot of sherry cask it seems, but giving it a nutty side. But mm, some of it doesn't seem very natural. So it's much less complex. It has evolved, it was more interesting in the beginning. Well, now we're on to the half bottle. Doesn't evolve very well, I have to say. But we will see on the palette. So technically, yeah, it was the four out of four face-to-face uh, -face blended whiskey series. But there will be a sequel with the blue label. So um, wait for it. On to the tasting, Slangeva. Cheers. So it's the uh, starting by again the old one from the early 80s, let's say, or mid 80s. Ooh. Haha. <laughs> That's what I like with the old, uh, um, I was about to say talisker, the old taliskers. So you, you ha there you have it. I tried a red label from bottled in uh, 1962 in a show, in a collector's, uh, let's say, corner. Oh my God, I was so smoky, so uh, complex, so beautiful. And it was really betraying the Talisker style, let me tell you. So this one has also a bit of this, 
and uh, delicate, maybe some colila as well, and, and of course the Kleinlich has a structural uh, uh, malt in there. It's very important the Kleinlich in in, uh, in blends and especially in the Johnny Walker range. The uh, one that um, highlights it the most, in my opinion, it was the old 18 years old gold label. Uh, now they have re re refurbished all the range, rebranded all the range, so I haven't tried the platinum for a, for a moment. So I should get me a platinum 18 to see if it's as good as the one I have, which was not called like that. But in theory, like in Chivas Regal 18, uh, it's where the climb shines the most. Or if it's not Kleinlich in the Shivas, uh, it's very close. So it could be Tininik or uh, hmm, something like that, yeah. So for those who wonder, even if some distilleries are, own, are owned by um, specific uh, groups, they do exchanges of uh, new makes and whiskies in bulk in order to fill uh, each company's blend. So it's a common practice in Scotland. And it's also wh why they, uh, bu uh, they uh, put into cask, they down with the water, they dilute it to 63.5. Since a decade or so, not, it was not made before, more than a decade now, um, in order uh, to get a certain profile and extraction, uh, wood extraction, but also because when they exchange barrels or they exchange new makes, uh, they can ease the the sell the sales because it's all down to a uh, percentage of alcohol uh, related to taxes. Unfortunately, it works like that. Excuse me. <coughs> so, it's been in the glass for 20 min uh, 30 minutes, 35 maybe. <coughs> and yeah, it becomes really beautiful. I like even some chocolate chocolate notes. I will say half milk chocolate, half dark chocolate. Very delicate. Very delicate um, <coughs> dried fruit notes. Raisins, not necessarily sultanas, but apricots, dried oranges. That comes from the Aberfeldy, in my opinion. Um, Martyr barley, some softened wild herbs. The teash element on the early nose are not as strong now. It's it switches now a bit more to uh, Earl Grey tea rather than black or green. A really lovely, lovely, lovely palette as well. Okay, let's try now on the palette the red from 2020 and then add some water and wrap it up. Again, it's very long, uh, rambling too much. Ooh, I don't like a lot of the nose. Let's see on the palette. And bear in mind all these, these are more designed to be, and that's in the world, the main way of consuming it, as I understand, as I read some articles in highballs or on ice. And myself, don't get me wrong, I drink this on ice as well. 
Uh, I'm not a super fan, except the, the old one, of course. I don't drink on ice. But uh, the, the, the most recent ones, except when the really very great batches, I don't drink them neat, I drink them on ice. It's an aperitif I mix. I don't mix things in it, but I eat things that can be sustained by this. Um, and it can handle anything in aperitif. While well, with more delicate, delicate whiskies are not made to, to eat anything with it. Mm. It's not bad, but it's so modern. So burnt wood, slightly burnt caramel, malted barley, but a bit too much Ovaltine. I love Ovaltine, especially in uh, Abbefeldi, and uh, when it shines the most in its single casks, by the way, shared single cask. But it's a bit too much here. The honey, which is usually acacia honey in the old ones, turns into uh, fake heather honey one, uh, if I may say. So yeah, I listed here all that you usually you can find in um, in Johnny Walker Red, in my opinion. Citrus fruit, not much in there, a bit more in the other. Honey, so like I said, not the same kind of honey. Caramel, the most unnatural here. Some natural maybe, but a bit pushed forward by uh, the oak treatment of the grain, I, I guess. And of some malts. So heavily toasted stuff uh, is on its way here. Herbal side comes across less natural here and a bit more there, but sweetened. Uh, light smoke, this is absolutely beautiful here. Here. Yeah, not so bad, okay. It's underlying it, but it's very average, let's say. Um, malted barley, sure, there is in both. Um, it comes across more beautiful in the older one. Uh, yeah, some mixed cereals, uh, muesli, like we say here, uh, for, you know, for the breakfast in your bowl. Some wheat, some oats, I don't sense it here. I not really sense it there, but in other versions. Dried fruit, yeah. Woxiness, yes, a bit there, not there. Uh, Ovaltine, like I said, not the best one here. A lot here, not much here. Mocha, not in those two, but it can happen. As well as dark chocolate, milk chocolate. So we're gonna try now the two to finish up the review with a few drops of water. I'm not gonna try ice on the old one, let me tell you, like I said for the other ones. For those who missed the previous one, um, please check, check out the series. I'm gonna put the initial one that explains the one about Valentine's. I did Valentine's face to face, uh, old versus new. I did Shiva's Regal. I did Famous Cruise. Um, there's this one, and there's gonna be the uh, blue label from Johnny Walker as well. Problem is, uh, this is my advice. If you come across a good batch, note the codes that are engraved there difficult to see, uh, to show at the camera. It's over here. Note the numbers and try to search when you're gonna go next to your shop the same batch, if it's good. Because it's the only way you're gonna, you're gonna enjoy really your Johnny Walker and other, lots of other brands. When it's mass market, you have to to note really things because they're gonna go be sold very quickly so you're not sure you're gonna find the same if it's very good better uh, grab another one so the older one yeah with a few drops yeah sure there's some OBA 
zum Lass. And some, it's some ways watery already before I put some, but it's very delicate to add water to the, an old uh, whiskey, even it's a young whiskey in theory. Probably not much more than five years old. But I'm sure there's some malts that are older now in this one, or I couldn't tell much for the new one. It's just my guess, it's not an information. Yeah, the overall impression is that the malt content I wouldn't say it's higher in proportion, but it plays a, a more important role. Probably because the grain are older and sweet, sweeter, and the malts have more character than now. My guess. I'm gonna try now the new one with uh, water and wrap it up. My God, it's gonna be 36 minutes and more. I shouldn't smell it. <laughs> okay, more caramel, more wood. Some spices as well. Doesn't turn very interesting. So this is honestly only to to, uh, to consume with ice. It's the only thing. The ice in theory breaks the profile because it, you put violently you put something that's violent because it's um, a shock of different temperatures the room temperature receives something uh, that's minus zero violently so necessarily there's a chemical reaction um, and the freezing of the alcohol tend to eliminate some elements and it's enhanced by the fact that it's chill filtered and colored of course but strangely red label Johnny Walker and also the 18 mind you the old 18 uh, we did a test in, in a, a master class that were very amazing freezing the glasses with the 18 and have had them with uh, some ice cream. I don't know how they did that trick, but it worked. And the the ice cream was complemented by the whiskey and vice versa. Um, now, about the current offer of Johnny Walker, this I recommend on ice. The black you can also, but beyond that, Sorry, I'm not advising any uh, any ice on the other versions, especially the blue and the all the other one. It would be a crime. Okay, so I'm gonna finish there. I hope you found it interesting. Reservation on what I say. Uh, have a look on my topic. Uh, of course, the majority of the historical information is in French, but there's a summary in English behind it. Plus, every tasting note, I took the time to translate it in English. So please have a look. It's an in-depth article, in article about Johnny Walker. Uh, not sure you find as, as in-depth one uh, outside the professional uh, uh, information you can get from the website, etc. And of course, you won't have my reservation on these in there. <laughs> Um, yeah, so have a look and tell me what's maybe what's your experience on the right label. And if you try different, what, what interests me the most and is if you try different batches from time to time and in a 10 years period of time, for instance, or five or three, what's your take on the changing of uh, on batch variations? Do you think there is really a uh, big batch variations and 
What do you think of uh, how it evolved over the years? <laughs> Thank you uh, and see you next time. Um, don't know if I will put in between the whiskey of the year or uh, maybe some French review coming in, but uh, one of the next videos will be the comparison with between uh, two batches of the blue label. Okay, thank you and see you very soon.